All right, hey everyone, welcome back to uh, Music Theory. Um, I took a little break there for a little while, so I made five Music Theory classes and then took a little pause and made some other classes, and now we're back in it, back in Music Theory. I thought we'd start um, by just kind of talking about where we are in the this kind of structure of Music Theory and how Music Theory is usually taught. So if you're in a college class, you would be required to take four semesters of music theory most of the time. Some colleges do it different, but the kind of traditional way of doing it is to have four semesters of music theory. And this would be the start of second semester music theory. So in this class, uh, we'll be covering, you can kind of think of it like uh, a deeper understanding of using the rules that we've learned in the first semester of theory. I like to think about it in like kind of broad terms. I think about it like this. In the first semester of music theory, you learn the rules, right? In the second semester, you learn to use those rules and you learn to bend those rules a little tiny bit. Um, kind of an advanced use of those rules is what you learn in second semester theory. In third semester theory, you focus on exceptions to the rules and really bending the rules. In fourth semester theory, the rules kind of fall apart. You work on uh, the, the, the way the rules crumble once, once composers start getting weird. That's kind of what fourth semester music theory is all about, and that's why it's my favorite. Um, because the rules, a lot of the rules kind of go out the window. And it's interesting that those four things kind of, not not 100%, but m more or less, they follow along with like history, right? So in, in uh, second semester music theory, where we are now, we're kind of around the 18th century. In third semester music theory, you're kind of around the 19th century, and um, fourth semester music theory, you're really in the 20th century, um, or 21st century, uh, or both. Um, so, you know, in the 20th century, that's where the rules kind of get really weird, and people just start throwing them out all together and making up their own rules, uh, and it's really fun. The 21st century, where we literally, like, exist as musicians now, um, the, the rules kind of fall back again into kind of where we are now, depending on what style you're in. We'll talk about that later. That's maybe somewhat controversial to say, but in the early 20th century, that's when things got really weird. And we'll get there. Uh, it's going to be fun. It's my favorite class to teach uh, in like the real world, the non-virtual world, is 20th century music theory. And that's the fourth semester. So we are now at the start of the second semester where we're going to talk about diving in deep to using the rules that we have uh, in things like 18th century counterpoint, uh, melodic embellishment, writing chorales, uh, SATB composition, that's like choir, sort of, uh, cadences, voice leadings, and stuff like that. So um, we're going to go through a lot of different stuff and not just this class, probably the next four or five classes will be second semester music theory. That's where we are. So probably around class 11 or 12, we'll be jumping into third semester music theory. Um, okay. So I just wanted to point that out, kind of give you kind of a barometer of where we are. If you're using this course as a study tool for, uh, as kind of to augment a college class you're in or class you're hoping to take. Um, we're, we're diving into the second semester of music theory now. Okay, uh, so let's move on and let's get to it. Let's start with our tools we use in this course. If you've taken the last five classes, you know what this is all about. But um, in case you're joining us fresh and new right now, let's, let's jump uh, into talking about that. 